Welcome to the What's So Smart podcast, powered by the Huntsville-Madison County Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Clark Dunn. Huntsville, Alabama is known as a smart place, but really, what's so smart about it? In this podcast, we will talk to the leaders of Huntsville's economic and cultural development to answer that question. From rockets to genomics, from cyber to music, What's So Smart will explore the visionary and data-driven initiatives that make Huntsville so smart. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA, and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Welcome back to the What's So Smart podcast. Today, I sit down to talk with Ruth McCardo of Hatch. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks. So I want to talk a little bit, uh, at the beginning, a little bit about your background. So mm-hmm. I know that you, can, you kind of consider Huntsville home. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about your journey to get here to Huntsville and kind of those work you were doing prior to Hatch. Yeah, I mean... That's a long story, actually. <laughs> uh, so yes, I am not a Huntsville native, but uh, I hope to be one day, really. I don't even know how that will work out, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, so I actually, uh, I grew up in the Philippines, and my family immigrated from the Philippines to Rockville, Maryland, okay. and uh, spent my childhood in that, in, in that uh, city, enjoyed it. Really, it's just about 20 minutes outside of D.C., Um, you know, went to college in the University of Maryland, and um, just really by chance and by choice that I moved here in Huntsville because of uh, the biotech industry. Really? So that's really how I uh, came about living in Huntsville. So what did you ultimately pursue a career in uh, in college and kind of, was your first uh, job here, I'm assuming, like a Hudson Alpha? Uh, So this was before Hudson Alpha, actually. Um, That's interesting. Uh, I've always wanted to be a chef when I was young, uh, and honestly, my dad didn't think that that was such a great career move, and and he essentially said, hey, either you go to college or um, you're going to have to go off on your own and, and start your life, and you know, at 17 and 18 hearing that, I'm just like, well, I don't know if I can go out there. I'll die, <laughs> you know? Um, so I went, and uh, I've always loved science and math. So I got uh, into the University of Maryland in their life science college um, and enjoyed the program and pursued uh, chemistry and biotech in general. So yeah, RNA and DNA, Gotcha. to uh, to be specific. So when you came to Huntsville, did you have any knowledge about what Huntsville was like, what what, what, what Huntsville was prior to coming here, or was it just a new experience for you? It was definitely a new experience. I had never even been down south. Uh, well, I guess Maryland is technically the South. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, but but maybe had not been south of Virginia, I guess okay. is what I'll say. And um, uh, interestingly enough, the lab that I was working in in Germantown, Maryland, was bought and moved into Low Mill. Wow. Um, so before Hudson Alpha, uh, we built a building inside Low Mill, which which you can still see remnants of uh, okay. today, but that was back in 2006, 2007. Wow. So how long did you kind of stay in the biotech realm mm-hmm. uh, here in Huntsville? And then when did sort of this transition to now being a chef and doing, doing that kind of come about? The way that biotech uh, works is, you know, you to, to really excel in it, you, you have to have uh, uh, the proper schooling, a PhD, a master at least. And I really decided earlier on, like, right, that, that I wanted to be a chef. So I just wanted to put full effort into my degree. I, got, I, I had gotten some really good opportunities in the biotech world, starting as a chemist, right, um, uh, working uh, a wet lab. And, and in that small company, um, I had met Jim Hudson, and he encouraged me to pursue other passions first within the biotech. So I actually got into uh, the engineering side of biotech. And, um, but you know, there was just this, uh, I guess in a way, a missing piece, right? And uh, in 2010, I just decided that, that it was time. It was time for me to pursue really what I was here for, my purpose, and um, could not find a job, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what was, so once you kind of made the decision to kind of explore that maybe entrepreneurial itch mm-hmm. to kind of go off and, you know, do this passion that you've always had, what was sort of the first, uh, what was that career journey from then do, taking that leap in 2010 to then, you know, working at the, 
at the camp mm-hmm. in Mid City. Um, I guess around around twenty twenty. I guess right. It was right before mm-hmm. COVID. I guess you were working yeah. at the camp. Yeah, it's it's even a longer journey than that. Okay. If, if you can imagine, um, but really uh, coming from uh, something technical like biotech into another industry like hospitality. Um, it, it was really just a hard transition, and it was a lot of uh, volunteering my time and an effort mm-hmm. uh, just to show people that I was serious about it and yeah. that it wasn't just a hobby that, that I kind of wanted to dip into. I wanted to jump straight into the deep waters and see what I, what I could do. Mm-hmm. And um, so that actually led to uh, cheese making first. Okay. Yeah, I ended up cheese making. In cheese make, uh, yes. So goat okay. cheese, goat cheese. I, I actually ended up working at a goat farm. Wow. Uh, that was the start of, of my culinary career. Love that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So you, you dive into this and goat cheese is the, is the, is the landing spot. Mm-hmm, How mm-hmm. long were you in the goat cheese industry? Uh, it, was, it was about a, a summer, okay. really. Um, uh, just enough to, to A, kind of have a little bit of that experience, give mm-hmm. me a little bit of confidence yeah. to, uh, to pursue other things in Huntsville. Um, you know, and so it came from cheese making to, wash. I was, I was a dishwasher yeah. for a little bit. And then that turned into being a fry cook and then a line cook. Um, and it's just really being curious and, and, uh, willing to work long hours and <laughs> find those chefs around town that was willing to, to show you the industry. And the line cook became a kitchen manager, Ki- kitchen manager became uh, a sous chef, wow. ended up moving to Oregon actually for about two, three years. So you work through all those stages of a restaurant, mm-hmm. kind of see from the ground floor level to the, to the, to the top level, yeah, yeah. so to speak. And then you ended up taking your efforts to, to Oregon. Around what year was that? Um, so that was around 2016. Okay. And I had actually already opened up two restaurants in Huntsville. Okay. Wait, 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 which two restaurants did you kind of were a part of it here in mm-hmm. Huntsville? It's called Sandwich Farm. Okay. And then there was a, a, a small restaurant on the square called Three Skillets, uh, more of like a pop-up uh, breakfast and lunch place. Um, and, but, you know, it wasn't enough. You know, there's, there's kind of a, a certain drive to be the best chef or, or you know, at the time really just, just trying to gain a lot of skill. And, and really, um, life, the way that it goes, yeah. it, it, I landed in, in Oregon, and they have a terrific food scene. So I, I was learning flavors wow. and nuances of food and even hospitality. And, um, and then came back to Huntsville in 2019 and, uh, and ended up at the camp. Wow. Mm-hmm. So how, how do you think your experiences working in a restaurant and kind of seeing all the different levels kind of gives you that appreciation maybe now for the work you do mm-hmm. or even for like when you get to that level when you're in Oregon and you're kind of more of a head role knowing that all the people that are working un- under you, you've kind of been in their shoes too. Do you think mm-hmm. that kind of helps you with the, having a, a, f- a fresh perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of empathy that comes in with the industry with a a lot of different people from from all sorts of of backgrounds. So so, yeah, there's there's it's not just about the technical aspects of food. It's it's about learning uh, how to work with different people um, in the kitchen, just much like probably in any industry. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. So. When, when you made the move to Oregon, did you always think you were going to come back to Huntsville? Or did you like kind of grow, grew fond of Huntsville prior to the move and knew you were going to come back? Or did this, that opportunity at the camp just kind of happen and then it kind of opened the door? You know, that's a good question. I don't know if, if I can for sure say that I had left with the intention of coming back. Mm-hmm. And that's just really how it came about. Yeah. I had a really great experience in in Oregon and, and quite honestly, in many ways, it's a lot easier to make a career in what I do in a bigger city like Portland, Oregon, than it is in Huntsville. Wow! Um, but there's just something about Huntsville that Kinda that, that call, yeah, that called me. Um, and even when I was out there, I was I was uh, my people were here. <laughs> um, so so I came back and never regretted it. Wow! Yeah. So you, you you come to the camp and around 2019, mm-hmm, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, the camp's pretty new at this point. I mean, That's there's right. not much of what, what we see today is mid city is not really there yet. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's a fairly new concept. Um, what did you kind of dive into and kind of first launch that would ultimately then kind of spawn the conversation that we're going to have with Hatch? It's really the almost the the artistic freedom. Mm. Uh, at that point, you're right. The camp was really new, so it was a it was a a blank 
slate. Yeah, you could kind of do with it, do with it whatever you kind of want. And I was encouraged to. Really? Wow. I was encouraged to come up with concepts that were living, residing in here, and um, and uh, in hopes that 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 people of Huntsville would would enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so. It was a, it was a, it was very much a, a very difficult time, but yeah. a great learning uh, period of my life, and met lots of people, including the co-founders of Hatch. Yeah, so mm-hmm. Hatch kind of spawned out of the need that you found, kind of right after COVID or in the midst mm-hmm. of COVID. Talk a little bit about how that, what that need was, and then what ultimately Hatch is trying to fill. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, there, there's no secret that there is a shortage of of a good labor force. It, across the board in all industry, but I think especially right now um, in Huntsville, especially with a growing food scene, uh, there there really wasn't a, a a pool of of people that was really passionate about the industry and want to see it elevate and thrive, and 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 really uh, the co-founders of Hatch, uh, uh, Beth Boyer and Garrett Coyne, saw this need even before I would voiced it out, really? right? Um, and it just happened that I was two weeks in in, uh, in my position over at MidCity, and they came in and wanted to talk about this great idea they had, and I was asked to sit in on this meeting, and I was hooked Sold. right wow. away, you know? And I said, you know, I, I wanna be a part of this. Um, and that was uh, 2019, and uh, we launched our first cohort Oh, uh, wow. In uh, 2022. Wow. So talk a little bit about how this, what, 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 how the structure of Hatch works mm-hmm. and the, the process that these cohorts go through. Okay. Uh, so Hatch is an eight week program and it is a work development program for youths. We call them opportunity youths, 18 to 24 year olds. And uh, the short version is we teach them life skills through knife skills wow. in hopes that they gain confidence and um, in order to, to live self-sufficient lives. Mm-hmm. So how has, the, how has, as Huntsville's continuing to grow and more restaurants are coming, how has, is, is there partnerships that Hatch is able to have with local mm-hmm. restaurants here in town that kind of allows these cohorts as they finish, uh, these students after they finish the cohorts to kind of find a, find a, a space for them in, in the community? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Huntsville is a very collaborative community. And so, yes, we work with uh, different organizations and also, like you said, restaurants. Mm. Um, we have over 70 graduates at this point. Wow. And they are in, uh, a lot of them actually are in the hospital, uh, Huntsville really? Hospital. They have a huge hospitality wing. You know, you have uh, Huntsville Hospital and at any given point, they can have 1,600 beds. And uh, those people have to be fed three times a day. And so uh, our hatchlings, that's what we call <laughs> our, our, uh, our participants, yeah. um, they work at Huntsville Hospital. We also have partnerships with other area restaurants like um, the co-op, uh, uh, certain uh, uh, hotels also, uh, AC hotels, um, and hopefully to grow into other industries. We've had uh, graduates in good company Right. Okay. Uh, and also and actually, I think we've had a, a graduate at Pizzell's. Really? Wow. Yeah. So they're 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 pretty much everywhere. Awesome. You know, the so, Poppy, yeah. uh, Domain South, you know, name it. How has I mean, I, as you launched that first cohort in 2020 and then now we're sitting here in 2024, has the cohort and the curriculum changed over those last four? <laughs> yeah. And how have you kind of developed it to as to maybe meet the needs as you're being approached? from mm-hmm, these people mm-hmm. in here in Huntsville that says, hey, here's kind of what we're looking for and how have you been able to integrate that into the course? Yeah. Uh, you know, each cohort's different. Um, each young person is different. And so you have a game plan going into each cohort, but really it's uh, meeting them where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's communicating with them to see what they need. And so we really curate the majority of our program to fit the need of that particular cohort. So if they need a little bit more life workshops in terms of financial literacy, we work with Bank Independent and uh, they have people to come and uh, talk about how to get loans, how to save up money, how to make sure that you have good credit. A lot of things that are needed 
uh, for for self agency. Mm-hmm. Um, if they are a group that needs a little bit more, uh, maybe more emotional support, we have uh, in house therapist that works with them with coping skills and even just communication with with coworkers. So it is a it's a very uh, intense and in depth program. The eight weeks that we have. Wow. So is the eight week program for these uh, for these students that come through? Is it something that they're spending like nine to five doing it, and then they go home, or how does this? What does it look like from their perspective when they're a part of this cohort? A lot of it is going to be their first job, you mm-hmm. know, and and we do consider it a job. We pay them a stipend, twelve hundred and fifty dollars, and that's so that they know that we respect their time. Mm-hmm. You know, they come in and we teach them, and they get paid just like a job. I, I mean, I, I think. You know, as it, it, it's interesting just to see how, you know, you're you're wanting you're buying into their into their life and showing showing that in, in different ways for them. Um, how have how has over since the cohort started? I mean, you always gone through quite a bit of uh, uh, graduates mm-hmm. of this program. How how do you go about finding new uh, new people to join the cohorts or is it kind of really grown organically over the last four years? Uh, definitely. Uh, it's such a great program that it has grown organically Mm -hmm. and really with the support of the community of Huntsville, we've been able to get the word out of the organization and even our mission and goals through word of mouth. Wow. Um, Recently, we have been doing the job fairs. We've been going through the job fairs um, and reach those, maybe those seniors that aren't quite sure yet of what they want to do after graduating. And if there's a little bit of uh, time between... uh, now and and what they have planned later on the summer, uh, we encourage them to apply in the program. Yeah. We also have a coffee shop in partnership with the South Huntsville Public Library. Okay. We've gotten a lot of graduates that go through there and see that we have this coffee shop. What is this? They learn <laughs> about the program and they're like, I want to join that. Yeah, and this is located at the old Grissom right there on Bailey Cove, I right? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, it, where does, is the, is the, where's the operation of Hatch? Like where is these, is, is, is there a facility that y'all have or where is this, um, where do the cohorts kind of meet to kind of get this experience? Yeah. We are looking to build our own facilities. Right now, we are operating at the old Henry's Mustang Cafe at Woody Anderson Ford. Okay. And uh, they're great sponsors of ours and just a really good, comfortable spot for us. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's, it's incredible just to see your journey from biotech mm-hmm. into now, into now uh, this re- restaurant here, into then now putting, putting the efforts and the skills that you've learned and giving them back to people. Um, over your time here in Huntsville, is there a unique experience that kind of stands out, either an interaction you've had working in the hospitality industry or, or, or whatever it might be that kind of stands out among the rest? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been just really fortunate, again, to be really in the in the right place at the right time and have somebody acknowledge the work that I've been doing, that I've been invited, right, in, into these conversations of, of where the industry um, should be and where it should land in the future. Yeah. So I think that that's kind of unique in Huntsville. For sure. Because there's a, there's a culture of a conversation, right, <laughs> of, uh, and also being included. Um, and so, so my journey in, in, in my career, I would say that's, to me, is, is a Huntsville experience. Yeah. I don't know if it would have been, I don't know if it, it, it would be the same or feel the same yeah. if it had happened anywhere else. It surely didn't feel like that in, in Oregon, even yeah. though I was doing maybe my best cooking out there wow. um, at yeah, the time. I think that's that's a testament just to the Huntsville community, like, like you mentioned. I mean, even though it's grown and you've been able to see it grow, you know, being in the right place at the right time uh, helps a lot, but I think mm-hmm. your hard work along the way has definitely propelled you to where you are today and yeah. continue to propel you uh, years ahead. Uh, I'm excited to see what Hatch is able to continue to do in years to come. And I thank you for being here today and talking yeah. a little bit about your journey and yeah. the, the, the formation of Hatch. Uh, we'll have all the information for Hatch in the episode notes if you want to find out more information there. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA, and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed hearing more about what makes Huntsville so smart.